Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. It is January 25th, 2015. Recording this a week later than it was supposed to come out. I am so far behind on everything. I started a, a new job a few weeks back and it has just completely kicked my ass energy-wise. So, you know, when I start coming out with these, I generally have the first four recorded and I think, oh, well, you know, getting number five done before because uh, I've got like a month lead time there, that'll be no problem. And I've, I've, I've gotten to the point where I'm ready to talk about it for like three weeks now, but I haven't actually gotten around to recording <laughs> until now, because I have just been exhausted on my time off. I'm also incredibly behind on an audiobook, blah, 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 blah. In any case, uh, uh, the only thing that really applies here is uh, two things. One, Almost certainly it will be a while before the next block, which is a little sad because we're getting ready to start 4th edition hardcore here. But on the other hand, I guess it's kind of a good time to uh, to take a break, right? I'm not really sure where I'm going to categorize this one because this is basically just an episode to talk about the fact, uh, the, the farewell to Drizzt. Because here's the thing. Last, uh, talked about Gauntlegrim, and this time I was going to talk about Neverwinter, Sharon's Claw, and possibly uh, The Last Threshold, if I had time. But, so what happened was, I started reading Sharon's Claw, and as I mentioned uh, last time, there's this character who I really wondered how much of a mystery it was when it came out, because, you know, he's this assassin with gray skin who used to be human, who's very sardonic, and blah, 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 blah. And, of course, uh, uh, spoiler, um, it <laughs> it's actually Artemis and Trary. In Sharon's Claw, fairly quickly and without any real fanfare, it's revealed that this is Artemis and Trary. He finds out Drizzt is still alive. We find out that Jarl Axel sold him into slavery. Blah, 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 blah. And through Neverwinter, I was essentially skimming everything that wasn't Artemis. Then there comes a point in Neverwinter, or maybe it's the end of Neverwinter, beginning of Sharon's Claw, I I don't know, they're all running together for me now, where Artemis uh, begins working with Drizzt, and essentially as soon as anyone gets around Drizzt, they become boring as well. Like, that's the thing, I, I was like, okay, so everything in this is just so dull to me, but at least I still like Artemis. I think it was in Gauntlegrim that I still like Jarlaxle, and then he gets around Drizzt, and he just becomes so dull because everybody is like, but you're the cool one, and blah, 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 and it's like, oh my god, all these characters are so much more interesting when they have nothing to do with Drizzt, and in Jarlaxle's case, Athrogate. But anyway, Artemis uh, quickly begins working with Drizzt and uh, Dahlia, and uh, the Drizzt Dahlia interaction is kind of interesting, I guess, because it's it's I I I want to be excited about seeing Drizzt in a relationship that's a little darker. You know, this is very much if Drizzt and Cadbury were Buffy and Angel, this is very much Buffy and Spike uh, in in comparison. You know, this is him going down a dark path and feeling like there's nothing really left to. To fight for, or what have you, and 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 all he does is fight, and he enjoys that. Like there's a spot where Jarlaxel shoves a blade into a dude's face, and Driz just doesn't respond, and he's like, "What's wrong with you, man? You used to be cool." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Ah, <sighs> so eventually I realized that I was skimming over Artemis' sections, which meant I was skimming over everything. I started to read uh, uh, Sharon's Claw, or got somewhat uh, through it, and I realized, like, holy shit, they're bringing back uh, Thwibbledorf as a vampire now. And I was like, I, you know, from the stuff that I had read, I was like, oh dear god, what is, like, is there anything to look forward to? And so I looked, and it's like, essentially after a couple of books, uh, Artemis just doesn't even, he's not even, like, there anymore. He just kind of drops out for a book, and then apparently he gets mentioned once or twice, and I'm just like, oh, dear God, like, Salvatore has just ruined anything that's worth reading in here. And I don't, I don't understand how that happened. Like, I don't get how, just in a few books' time, everything got so dull. So... This is me essentially covering Neverwinter, Sharon's Claw, Last Threshold, Companions, Night of the Hunter, and Rise of the King, because I just do not give a shit anymore. I am done with Drizzt, absolutely, completely, not even going to read the 
Companions, which is part one of the Sundering. If I ever make it to the Sundering, I will just skip to number two, because from everything that I've been told, the Sundering is just a backdrop, and it's not really necessary to read all six or whatever it was to get a uh, an idea of that. Really, you've got to read behind-the-scenes stuff to know what's going on with the Sundering anyway. So, yeah, done with Drizzt. I'm sorry, but it just... It just holds no interest for me. I mean, I read stuff about it, and it's like, we have another book where Thribbledorf Puentes is back as a vampire, and they save him, and that's a subplot, and it's like, Gauntelgrim, halfway through, gave him an excellent goodbye. Why can that not be where we just stop? Like, I am... I am totally okay with the idea that this is a fantasy world, and death is not necessarily always the end, but it's like... Just stop, you know? <laughs> just just stop. Beyond that, everybody gets brought back with the new stuff, and it's like, I just, I absolutely know how it's going to read, and the stuff they're kind of going to go over, and it's going to be like, Ah, oh, elf, how be you given this up? Did you not, do you not remember all that we meant to each other, and Caddy Bree's going to be quiet and withdrawn, and... Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? 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 Just done. Done with it. Done, 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 done. No more. There was this period of time in there where I really felt as if Salvatore was growing up and, and that just went away. I don't know what happened. I Maybe those were his coke years. I... <laughs> I, I know that like a lot of authors who I really like, I, I, I like I, I'm like this is their golden period. I find out later those are the years they were on a lot of coke. I don't want to be like, hey, if you want your books to be better, do a lot of coke, because obviously I would rather they were writing books I didn't enjoy and living longer. But yeah, uh, whatever magic that Salvatore had for a brief little period of time there, for me it is just gone. I would like to point out I am glancing on the wiki page right now and there are apparently 26 actual Drizzt books and I don't think I'm not seeing the uh, the Cell Swords books 2 and 3 on here so that means 28 pretty core Drizzt books. It's a hell of a lot of books and I'm I guess I I get it that he couldn't keep up uh, that momentum forever or really very long at all. Uh it's just I mean it's just ridiculous, right? So this is the end for that. When we come back next time, we'll be heading into 1478, which that's another thing. They go and they basically like the switch over and absolutely 100% 4E is like uh, the end, the original ending to Army of Darkness. They fall asleep in a cave and wake up and it's years later and it's like, that just seems to keep happening to people <laughs> they want to pull in to 4E. It was like, all these guys are going to live, uh, what's the you know, why not just let him adventure for 13 more years or whatever, but anyway, who cares? So the next time when we come back, we'll be in 1478. We will be starting out with Unholy and uh, Godcatcher. I'm going to upload, I, I'm going to try to remember to put on here uh, in the description my list of 4E, how we're going to approach that, because I never heard back from anyone. You know, I'm, I'm assuming really nobody pays attention to the dates and everything. They just read what they want to read. So I'm going to put on here my list of what we're going to read and in what order. I don't think it's going to make a hell of a lot of difference. It looks like basically everything 4E takes place in a couple of years. If there's anything that you see that I've missed, I know there are a couple of ebook only releases from 4e and i think i've caught them all and put them on there if anyone notices any that aren't on there let me know if you have any major problems with anything that i've put in there then let me know but some of it i just had to guess and so i was like ah what the hell i'll just throw it in here so that's what we're gonna do nothing really exciting here just a you know more logistics than review this time around but i am excited to hit uh full on absolutely 100 4e I might go ahead and add this as a little epilogue to the 3E list, even though we really talked about it in more depth last time, but it, it doesn't feel like we've really started 4E here, especially since I didn't read, <laughs> like, anything in here. I mean, I, you know, I read enough of Neverwinter, but that's it, obviously. So, I will see you next time, somewhere down the road. I hope it doesn't take too long, um, and as always... Catch me on Goodreads, the stuff that I am reading, which is also slowed down to a trickle. I am updating on there. I am slowly but surely trying to go through the 40K universe uh, in the order that it's been published and write decent reviews on that. Also, I'm looking at starting podcast uh, much more in line with the Rift stuff that I used to do. 
in the next couple of months, so that should be interesting. So I've got I've got stuff on the burner. Realms remembered taking a bit of a backseat for a while, but definitely still on my plate. I'm not giving up. I'm excited about fourth edition, or I'm at least interested. The Drizzt stuff has kind of put a bad taste in my mouth, but I'm at least interested. We'll meet back one day. Uh, until then, this is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. <laughs>